What's up everybody? So today we're going to be doing a lesson on LLMNR slash MBTNS poisoning. It's one of the most common attacks that you see today in terms of internal penetration testing and it's one of the most common attacks that I perform. Actually it's the first thing I perform when I'm doing internal penetration tests. So I'd like to share with you the tactics, techniques, and even the defensive measures that we can take in order to exploit and prevent this attack. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's first talk about what is LLMNR slash MBTNS poisoning. Well, LLMNR is Link Local Multicast Name Resolution, and its predecessor is MBTNS, which is NetBIOS Name Service. They're both used to identify a host when DNS fails to do so. Now, the way that they identify a host and connect to clients is using a NTLM or NTLM v2 hash, which can easily be exploited. To better explain this, I want to show you an image instead. Okay, so let's take a look at this example here. We've got a victim trying to connect to a share drive on a server. However, the victim has typed in the share wrong. So they're trying to connect to a share called HackMe, but instead typed in HackM. Because the share does not exist, the server is going to respond and say, I have no idea what you're talking about. So this seems like a DNS failure. Because we're having this DNS failure, the victim machine is going to send out a broadcast message to everybody on the network, and it's going to say, hey, does anybody know how to connect to HackM? And a malicious hacker can sit in the middle and say, you know what, I sure do know how to connect to that. Why don't you just send me over your hash or your credentials and I'll connect to it for you. And the victim's gonna say, okay, here you go, here's my hash. Now, the dangerous part of this hash is this hash can be taken offline and cracked, which you're gonna see here in an example, or it can actually be relayed without ever being cracked and used to gain access to machines as well. Today we're gonna to be looking at what it's like to capture that hash and then crack it offline. So let's go ahead and take a look at a real life example and get a better understanding of what this might look like. Okay, so now let's set the example. I am an attacker or penetration tester sitting on an internal network. As a penetration tester, Responder is a tool that I run first before I run Nessus, Nmap, or any type of scanning software. I like to get my listeners set up and running. Now Responder is a tool by Impacket that comes built into Kali Linux and allows us to do LLMNR slash MBTNS poisoning. So to fire that up, we say Python responder.py dash I eat zero for your ethernet interface and then dash RDW, you can leave off the V, I'm leaving it on for demonstration purposes and verbosity purposes. So we're gonna go ahead and fire this off. And the reason we do this before we get any scans running is it starts listening for events. Our scanning software might actually trigger some events and trigger those broadcast messages and help us capture hashes. So it's best to run Responder first thing in the morning or when people are coming back from lunch and logging into their computers. As it starts to generate and trigger these events, it's typically more quiet during the day and during down hours. Now, to set up the situation more, I have built out an Active Directory lab. We've got an Active Directory server, and we've got a Windows 10 victim machine here. Now, as we showed in the demonstration, we have a HackMe folder that is connected to a Hydra domain controller here on the Marvel network. We've got a user here, Frank Castle, that is going to attempt to connect to the wrong share that is not known by the server. For simplicity purposes, I'm gonna actually just point this directly at my uh, attacker machine. Hit enter here. Now the server's not gonna know where this is going, so it's gonna send out that broadcast message and say, hey, who knows where this is at? And hopefully our machine picked it up and said, hey, I know where it is, send me your hash. And exactly what happened here. So you see we pick up an NTLM v2 hash, we've got it twice here, and we've got it for the user F Castle, Frank Castle here. We've got the domain as Marvel, and then we've got the NTLM v2 hash. Now, depending on this user's password, it may be an easy crack and it may lead to some quick win. This is why we fire up Responder and do poisoning right in the beginning to try to capture these hashes or even relay these hashes if we can't crack them. 
uh, and try to get some easy win. So now let's cut over to Hatchcat and look at what this might look like. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is use a tool called Hashcat. We're gonna specify a mode or module of 5600. All that does is tie into NTLM V2. If you're curious about the modes and their numbers, their corresponding numbers, all you have to do is type in dash dash help to see a full list of uh, hashes that Hashcat can crack. So I have put the hash that you saw come through into hashes.txt and I am running it against the list of rockyou.txt. So now all we have to do is fire this off and it'll take a second to initialize the device kernels and memory. And if you have a decent graphics card at all, it should crack it relatively quick if you have a easy password. Now you saw it come through, it took not that long at all. Uh, and now we found that we have a password of password one. So good old Frank Castle is not using a secure password by any means and allowed us to crack it. And now we could take this password, try to log in all over the place and see what kind of access it really could get us. Okay, and on to defenses. So the best defense in this case is to disable LLMNR and MBTNS. I provided instructions in the block on the left if you would like to do that. Now, if you cannot do that in your environment, the best course of action then is to, one, require network access control. If an attacker cannot get on your network, then they cannot perform this attack. Now, let's note, network access control can be bypassed and an attacker that is motivated will bypass network access control. The more important action here in a layered defense is to require strong user passwords. The longer the password, the harder it is to crack. I say here greater than 12 characters in length for you, uh, you admins. However, the longer the better. If it's a 16 character password, it's likely that I'm not cracking it. I have cracked 12 character passwords before. The longer and more complex the password, the harder it is for an attacker to crack the hash. Now this does not prevent SMB relay. That is not an attack we have talked about here, but SMB or NTLM relay, when we take this hash, do not have to crack it and just pass it on to another machine. This doesn't prevent it. That's where we move into tools like SMB signing, but we'll cover that in a later video. So if you enjoyed this video, I thank you, thank you so much for watching. Please do hit that like button, that subscribe button, and please share with a friend. Until next time, I am the Cyber Mentor, and I thank you for joining me.